Hey guys, uh, I'm back for my first preview video of this channel. Obviously the first video was just that introduction today. Um, as it is currently, today is the 22nd of December and of course we've got a huge amount of National Hunt horse racing coming up over the Christmas period. So we better crack on into that. And I'm going to be tackling one of the biggest ones of the day, or of the... Um, a festival season I suppose and that is the King George the sixth chase at Kempton on Boxing Day. Uh, Boxing Day I think at 310 I think but at this point in time 10 declared runners, 10 confirmed runners um, not all of them a few of them mightn't run but I think certainly 8 out of the 10 will uh, if not all 10 to be honest uh, but what I'm going to be doing is kind of going through most of them and uh, just um, really saying what I think about their chances in the race. And I suppose I will start with market leader and that is Don Cossack um, for Gordon Elliott and Gigginstein House Stud. Um, Brian Cooper will probably be over in Kempton to take the ride. I suspect he'll go there rather than Leopardstown. don't think he's got anything too big in Leopardstown on Boxing Day. Because um, do, they don't really have any really good two-mile novice chaser, I don't think. That's the only really big race on the 26th in Leopardstown. So I think Brian Cooper will be over there. Uh, stable jockey, of course. And I think Don Cossack has an excellent chance, as his price would suggest. You know, he was an unlucky loser at Cheltenham last year when he was third in the Ryanair. I don't think he would have won, to be honest. I don't think he would have won, because I don't think anyone was beating Ux Alexander that day. He just kind of seemed to... It just seemed to be his day. Um, but Don Cossack would have certainly come second if he didn't hit traffic at almost every fence. <laughs> Uh, made a few mistakes because of hitting traffic, especially, I think it was two out, kind of got sandwiched in between two regressing horses, which completely knocked the wind out of him. But he stayed on well, and of course, he um, then went on and like he absolutely routed the Melling Chase field, and then went one better and went up in trip at the end of last year to the three mile one Punchstein Gold Cup and beat Jack Adam and Road to Riches. Fairly cosily as well, which was very impressive, because Jack Adam and Road to Riches, as their Gold Cup form would suggest, were the second and third best three-mile chasers in England and Ireland. Uh, Road to Riches, of course, won the Lexus. Um, Jack Adam won the Thiestes, and both of them ran admirably, admirably behind Coney Gree. And on other years, I suspect Jack Adam would have won it. And on other years, Road to Riches probably would have won it. Because it was a vastly run race, especially considering the grand conditions. But that was a really good effort from Don Cossack. Since, like, his two reappearances this year have been in small enough, small beer contests, really. The JN Wine Champion Chase down Royal, which he was only up against three rivals. Like, he's only done what he's had to do, though. Um, he's both been up against rivals he should beat but he's beaten them all by he both won both his races by a combined I think 29 lengths I don't think he came off the bridle once in either of them so you know his form as it is exemplary and he should go well but he is of course up against uh, Willie Mullins um, as Gordon Elliott usually is and Mullins of course sends Vautour over to the um, King George. Vautour is an interesting one because um, Superb. Like, I suspect the best performance at the festival last year, like, in terms of impre impressiveness and kind of completely mauling his rivals. You know, obviously, Coney Gree, superb performance. I suppose on a lo lesser note, uh, on the fringe in the Fox Hunters was uh, very, very impressive. But that, that's a lesser race, you know. Vator is in a grade one race in the JLT novices and absolutely put them all to bed. Uh, jumped fluently. And just looked imperious, you know. And, you know, people are, are like horse like a fatty stronghold, Val Sarlito, who I'll be getting on to later, you know, they're, they're good horses. They're good horses. And he just absolutely tore them apart, which I thought was very impressive. His reappearance in the Ascot Chase was underwhelming. I think he did very well. I think Ruby Walsh did very well, and Vautour himself did very well to win the race, because... Nothing really went his way. He didn't seem to settle that well. Made a few mistakes down the back, especially in the second circuit. And 
was kind of struggling, and I thought Petit Zig was going to get him, but he kind of he just found enough and won by, I think, two and a half lengths in the end. A kind of a gutsy victory. It's also nice to see him, though, win a gutsy battle, um, where, you know, he, he had to tough it out, not just getting it all his own way, because he certainly won't be getting it all his own way, stepping up into Gold Cup territory. There's too many good horses, especially at the moment, for him to have it his way. So we've got to understand he's got a battle um, on his hands all the time. But I think Vautour, if his jumping is sound, extremely good chance. Problem is Vautour's record of jumping is not great. And apart from that Cheltenham performance, he hasn't gone a run without making at least one really bad mistake. Next, so like they're the two, I suppose, big ones from Ireland, the best shout it seems from England is Q card which is understandable considering his victories in the Charlie Hall and the Betfair Chase this year he seems to be back to his old best I think he certainly got the best opportunity as his price would um, indicate he's got the best chance of the English horses I don't think he quite has the quality of Don Cossack or Vautour I'm not sure why I say that maybe I'm a little biased to the Irish or something I don't know but I don't I'm not sh quite sure what he was beating in both of these races this year, because I'll get on to Sylvie Nakaconti next. I don't know how good that form is. You know, he did it as good as he could. A bit like Don Cossack, though. I don't know what he... Like, he's beaten absolutely nothing this year, really. At, at this, When you get to this level, he's, he's beaten nothing. But I, I just think Q Card will be a little exposed at this top, top level. Although I suspect, as is usual with Colin Chisart horses, they'll give it their all, and he'll be there, thereabouts, he won't be languishing in last or anything, and uh, far from it as well, but I don't think he quite has enough to win this race. And that leads on to Sylvian Conti. Sylvian Conti, I think, isn't going to win, like, uh, you've got to obviously respect him, because if he's won the last two King Georges, he's won a few Betfair chases, done nothing at Cheltenham though, I don't think he's really any concern to these top horses at Cheltenham because he doesn't like it around there. We're never going to win the Gold Cup. And I think, to be honest, he's regressing rather than progressing. Like, his performance in the Bet Fair was ordinary. Like, Cucart just ripped him to shreds and he was completely cooked four out um, and lost, you know, eight, nine lengths. I don't think that, you know, and he's, he was beaten a long way in sixth in last year's Gold Cup. I know he won the Betfred Bowl, but I'm not sure what he was up against that day. You know, he beat Balina Gore only by like a half length that day, and Balina Gore hasn't exactly uh, franked that form. So Simeonaco Conti, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be resting much hope on him. Although, he, he, of course, because of his past record, you still got to respect him. Then I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and um, get um, move on a little quicker at the moment. Because we're into the slightly lesser horses. Smart place. Um, interesting, because Alan King said after the Hennessy that he wouldn't run over Christmas. But he's kind of miraculously been entered into this race at quite late notice. Uh, but has been supplemented into it. I don't think Smart Place will win. Because he's been previously very exposed at this level. And I'm, I'm really unsure of the quality of this year's Hennessy. I know he won it superbly and I've take nothing against them and he absolutely routed them but you gotta like first lieutenant was third i think and was his main rival for most of the race you know he, he was up there uh, i can't quite uh, remember who came second i know it's at the tip of my tongue but i can't can't remember it at this time but you're kind of going there like first lieutenant is past it you know he was good three or four years ago he was a good three mile chaser um he's not anymore really you know he it was a bit of a like it was a bit of a re rejuvenation for first lieutenant to be fair it was a good good race for him but i don't think beating him is you know gonna win you this king george this year especially with the standard of three more chasers that is around at the moment don't really see it and then we've got Alpha Roth. Alpha Roth's a bit of an interesting one. A bit of a forgotten horse, really, under Paul Nichols. Uh, John Hales' uh, owner switched him to the Skeletons um, this year. And subsequently, on his first run for the Skeletons, won the um, P. 
Peterborough Chase. Yeah, the Peterborough Chase against a nickel source, Petit Zig. Um, he he had Petit Zig won though, like he had him beat um, by two and a half lengths or something at the last minute. Petit Zig fell, which meant he ended up winning by twenty five lengths or something. Now he wouldn't have won by that, of course. He would have won by maybe four or five lengths because he had Petit Zig beat. But um, I don't know. Alfaroff's a bit. He's an improver. I don't I don't know about him over this trip. I'd say realistically their plan for Alpha Roth is the Ryanair at Cheltenham. And I think he has an excellent chance in the Ryanair, to be fair. Um, I'd I'd have him down as a very good horse over that kind of two-mile five, that middle distance. But Alpha Roth, I think um, he, he is an improver. He's a bit of an outsider, I suppose. I don't think he's quite, quite good enough, again, because of just the sheer quality of the three-mile chasers at the moment. I don't think he's quite good enough, but one to consider, especially if he does go down the Ryanair route for Cheltenham. Next of all is Road to Riches. Now, Road to Riches has a big question mark over him, because me and I think an awful lot of other people in Ireland and England alike are kind of confused that Road to Riches is supposedly going to the King George. I would have thought he was much more suited to the Lexus. He won the Lexus last year. And he seems on his past form to have to have a little bit more of a want for softer ground. So you would have thought, like, because at the moment, like, I'm in Dublin. I live only 10 minutes from Leopardstown Racecourse. And, like, it's been a diabolical winter. You know, it's, like, we're already, we're only, we're still five days away from the festival starting. Six days away from that race. And you already know it's going to be heavy. Like, and it's not going to be anything even better than heavy it won't even be yielding it'll just be heavy um, and I would have thought Road to Riches would lap that up but he's um, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not sure about him because I would really fancy him in the Lexus and the betting would indicate that like the betting even though he's kind of confirmed he's going to the King George he's like 25 to 1 for the King George and 3 to 1 for the Lexus so everyone still thinks he's going to change his mind and I think he still can but, I don't know, I don't know, because I think, like, I suppose if he does ring, run in the King George, I think he's certainly got a better chance than 25 to 1 would show, if he kept up at 25 to 1, I'd certainly be backing him each way, he's a, he's a terrific horse, I think, he's a good grinder, he's a good galloper, um, will be up there with the pace, he's not one of these horses that's held up and potentially traffic problems, he'll just get on with things, and I like those types, and he seems fairly game, so... You know, if he does run in the King George, maybe a chance. Um, I'd much prefer to see him in the Lexus, though. And I don't know whether overall they will run him in the Lexus. And the last three I'm going to brush over pretty quickly, because these are the three outsiders. Valserlido, Irish Cavalier, and Ballynagore. Valserlido, an improver last year. Um, but I don't think quite good enough at this level. Again, I... I would have thought overall the Ryanair is his aim at a slightly shorter trip. He was un under that slightly shorter trip the whole of last year. Although he did always show a little bit of a want for a little bit further. Um, obviously completely outclassed though by Vator in the JLT Novices chase. Was I think a, like an 18 length third. Uh, sharing a photo for second with Apache Stronghold. Um, so... I wouldn't, I think he'd be best watched. It wouldn't surprise me if he ran a good race, but again, I, I suspect best watched. Um, then Irish Cavalier, obviously, seemed to have the Paddy Power Gold Cup in his back pocket when turning for home at Cheltenham. The hill, I think, and the heavy ground got to him. He was subsequently, he was meant to run in, was it, is it the United House Gold Cup? which was only a few weeks ago, at Cheltenham. I don't know where, where all the Paddy Power Gold Cup horses subsequently went, kind of Anna Cotty and all that, um, and was was going to be one of the favourites, uh, but it was heavy ground, and Rebecca Curtis this time didn't even bother running him, he was the non-runner because of the going, which I think is fair enough. He doesn't like heavy ground, so if it does get heavy at Kempton, he has no chance, and he probably won't even run if it's heavy ground. I don't think Rebecca, Rebecca Curtis will bother 
If it's good to firm or good, well, not good, it won't be good to firm. If it's good to soft or good, he's another one to watch out for. I don't think he's going to win the race or anything, but I think he's a very good horse um, that just wants better ground. Again, Ryanair chase, big possibility, especially if the ground is good at Cheltenham. And Ballynagore, yeah, Ballynagore is the outsider. He, he's got ability in him, obviously, he was only. A length second to Sylvie Nacco Conti in the Betfair Bowl last year. But his two appearances this year in the Charlie Hall and the Betfair have been very underwhelming. And I think he'll be outclassed again at Kempton. So that's all of what I think about each of the individual horses. If you were to pin me down now and tell me I had to pick the winner, I would go for Don Cossack. Because I think he's assured stamina-wise and a bit of a better jumper than Vator. That's not being said, I think if Vator puts in a clean round of jumping, he is well in with a shout. Same with Q-Card, I think Q-Card does have an opportunity. All the rest, you know, they could cause an upset, but I, it would be an upset, I think. Um, and I'd still be very shocked if Road to Riches runs in it. But he might, he, he obviously, that is the plan, because it, like they've confirmed him for this race. But I, I just can't get my head around it, to be honest. Because uh, I would have thought the Lexus is right up his street. But what what are you to do? If he runs in the Kempton, he, I would back him each way, to be honest. Because I think he'd be... Like, especially if he kept at around 20 to 1, 16 to 1. I'd be eating that up all day long. Um, but you pin me down now. I'd say Don Cossack. Each way shout. Road to Riches. Um, Vator and Q-Car to challenge if they jump soundly. So that is uh, my opinion for the King George. If you have a different opinion or similar one, uh, don't uh, feel free to comment away and uh, obviously like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. I'll see you guys later. Bye.